Twice a week in the Papuan capital of Jayapura, an inter-island ferry docks, spilling out its human cargo. The passengers are ethnic Papuans and Indonesian trans-migrants who've made this province their home. You won't find many foreigners disembarking and no journalists. It took us months and many permits later to get here, so paranoid of the authorities. After four decades of Indonesian rule, trans-migrants dominate the coastal cities. They also dominate the economy, the police and the military. Yet half of all indigenous Papuans have never been to school and most remain on the margins of society. They've become vulnerable to an epidemic that has already infected up to 3% of the population and set to double in future. They're mourning for their friend and neighbour, Yaman Wender. He died this morning of AIDS. <laughs> AIDS worker David Wombrow met him a few weeks ago and today he's organising his funeral. Once every month, he and his staff reach into their own pockets to buy coffins, crosses and graves, because people like Yarm and Wender come to them when it's too late. Baik, pada di siang hari ini, ambamu dipanggil oleh Tuhan. And God may soon be calling on five of Yarm and Wender's friends. They're also HIV positive. Field workers fear there will be many, many others. HIV AIDS is more prevalent here than anywhere outside of Africa. In 2001, it's a low uh, people who are positive, but now almost uh, Every week, my staff uh, uh, see uh, some people who positive. Maybe one week ago, my staff uh, take uh, 30 people and five of them uh, positive. In the darkness, Yaman Wender is being laid to rest. At least he knew his killer. He contracted HIV AIDS by having unprotected sex in a culture where men have multiple sexual partners. But many others have died undiagnosed and uncounted. I feel we are in a situation of crisis. Because the silence is closed. For every four people infected in Papua, three, like Yam and Wenda, are indigenous. And in a place as tense and sensitive as this, everything, even health, becomes infected by politics. <laughs> Indonesia took control of Papua in 1969 under a UN-brokered but flawed referendum. A policy of transmigration then began in earnest, culturally and socially transforming the province. Now that HIV AIDS has arrived and hit the indigenous population the hardest, some Papuan leaders are alleging it's been deliberately introduced to decimate the Papuan population. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Agus Alawa is a respected Papuan leader. His predecessor, Tay Selawe, was assassinated by Indonesian special forces. He says HIV AIDS is just the latest strategy of Indonesia's to destroy his people, once the overwhelming majority reduced through time to 66 per cent. We are put this issue as the genocide uh, reality here in West Papua. Can you explain further what you mean by genocide? We have some experience and then some indication that a lot of Papua are dying anywhere because of the disease of uh, uh, HIV AIDS here. Um, this is a kind of business because of behind of this uh, disease we have uh, illegal logging, illegal mining, illegal fishing, all of this, then all of this uh, business bring the prostitute woman come in Papua. So who organises the prostitution in these remote areas? It cannot survive without any supporting by military or police. No. Never. Agus Alawa has no evidence of genocide by HIV AIDS and only a handful of other Papuan leaders agree with him. Constant Karma, a former deputy governor of Papua and now heading the AIDS commission here, is not one of them. Karena data-data kami juga memberi gambaran bahwa HIV di Papua dimulai lewat kontak pedagang, kontak nelayan, bukan bukan militer. Bukan eh, oknum-oknum tertentu. Merauke, the southern port city, gazes across the Arafura Sea, where Thai fishermen regularly trawl the waters. And in 1992, they had sex with local prostitutes. When they'd finished, they'd left behind Papua's first recognised cases of HIV AIDS. Hak untuk kebebasan, the right to freedom. Dr Nafsia Boy heads the Indonesian AIDS Commission. The wife of a former governor of East Timor, she's come from Jakarta to help out. The free condoms they've been sending are just not being used. She also knows that men can be unfaithful, so she's pushing the female condom as the first line of defence. Caranya memakai sama saja, ini hanya ditekuk demikian. Kemudian dimasukkan ke dalam vagina seperti tadi, jadi bisa jongkok begini, bisa. She says women must act to protect themselves in a culture that has always practiced high-risk sex. Ya, kini. Nah, demikianlah terjadi. Begitu? Ya. Ini yang terjadi. Nah, kalau sudah selesai, memang betul. Ini keluar. Ini tetap akan tinggal. Jelas? There is a history of high prevalence of um, sexually transmitted infections in Papua. Even during the Dutch col uh, colonial times, two times there was a big outbreak of STIs and some tribes were almost uh, wiped out. So it's not that this is something new. Merauke has one of the highest sex worker infection rates in Indonesia. In Yoba, the red light district, the advertising in the brothels is all about safe sex. Condom use is compulsory, according to the brothel madam, 
who says she goes around and checks that they've been used. And as for the girls, well, the local government has made testing compulsory. So what happens if a girl, you find she is HIV positive, where does she go to work? Tati Mama is either lying to us or unaware of what's going on under her own roof. When she's gone, we secretly interview a sex worker she'd recruited from Java. Let's call her Lola. Lola is HIV positive and still on the job. yang kerja di sini sudah lama tapi masalah sekarang kurang lebih dari satu tahunan when you have a, a customer do you tell them that you're HIV positive uh, memang kalau masalah begitu saya tidak menceritakan toh tapi setiap ada tamu itu memang diharuskan harus pakai kondom and if, if the customer says, no, I don't want you to use a condom, I'll give you some more money, what, what do you say? Oh, saya begini memang, kerja kalau makan, saya tidak mau. Health officials had better hope she's telling the truth, because this is the regulated sex industry, the one they think they have under control. Our drive from Marake to Demande village, home to 250 members of the Marin tribe. They've organised a traditional welcome because visitors don't come here often. Neither do they get much in the way of health services here. Village elder Paulinus Dinkin says health educators first came here four years ago to warn them of the dangers of this deadly disease. But he still doesn't know very much about it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not one person here has been tested for HIV and they have no idea where to get condoms. We have not been able to reach them with appropriate health services and all that. But the man can walk down to Timika, can walk down to Marauke, etc., have fun, get infected, and then go back to their families. It's a Saturday night in Jayapura's Imbi Park. This is the secret sex industry, where services are provided in cars, alleyways and the beach. Most of the girls are indigenous and few are full-time. They're here because they have no alternative. Hiding in the shadows is Ernie. She's troubled and illiterate, the daughter of trans migrants. She's already had two clients this week, making just enough to feed her three children. Ernie is also HIV positive. 
Do you tell your clients that you are HIV positive? Some are like. Do you ever use condoms? Does it not worry you that you could just be passing this on to other people? That's probably how Emil Deda got it. He was a security guard who often worked away in Timica, near the Freeport Gold and Copper Mine. And he didn't tell his wife, Wilhelmina Sawaki, that he went to brothels. Wilhelmina Sawaki is now HIV positive and part of a disturbing development. There are now more HIV positive housewives than infected prostitutes. Memang waktu pertama kita dua sempat putus asa. Putus asa mau bunuh diri aja. Her husband died of AIDS two months ago. And he fits the profile of the typical carrier of the virus. From the brothel into the family home. Ya, para, para ahli bilang mobile man with money. It's a weeknight in Sentani, Jayapura's red light district, and the Kijangs are virtually bumper to bumper. That's the four-wheel drive favoured by public servants. They've got money, and a third of them regularly buy sex. More money began flowing to them after 2001, when Jakarta granted Papua special autonomy. And as the money and developers flowed to remote areas, so did prostitution, fertile ground for the spread of HIV. Tapi ini adalah apa apa arus pekerja seks yang bergerak dari satu daerah kepada daerah lain. Mobilitas penduduk Papua keluar Papua juga cukup tinggi. Mereka juga bisa kontak seks di luar Papua. Orang Papua yang keluar Papua, mobile man with money. A degree of self-government for Papua has also meant decentralization of health services. And ironically, this has made it even more difficult to fight the virus. Officially, Jakarta says the prevalence rate is 15 times the national average, but field workers say the figure is closer to 50 times. This woman was infected by her husband, and she's since died, leaving behind three orphans. Papuan leader Agus Alawa despairs at the ever-increasing death toll. All of this, the games are, has, has come from Papua men. And then after they have sexual relations here and then back to their home and then also they sleep with her, his wife or like this. Uh, but that's so not... most of Papua women are uh, victims here. But then that's not genocide, is it? That's not the Indonesians introducing something deliberately to kill the Papuans, is it? Really, that is not really direct uh, plan of uh, um, uh, genocide, but uh, it's indirect because of the who arranged all of this business way. 
And then the Papuan, or men or women, they are victims uh, because they are involved in this uh, of, uh, business. Yeah. To leaders like Agus Aloa, the wounds of the past are so deep, his people so traumatised, that health and politics inevitably merge. Suspicious at the need for a 14,000 strong security force under special autonomy, he says they're here to weed out the independence fighters. And HIV AIDS fits in with this strategy. It's a claim dismissed by Jakarta, though it must be said that soldiers, also being mobile men with money, have so far not been tested for the virus. The process of uh, delivering the disease or delivering of uh, people here in Papua, it is the best way how we can influence the Papuan people in order to uh, stop their political aspiration, I guess. We, on our side, are doing our best to save this, na uh, this nation, uh, to, or not this nation, we, to save uh, Papua from the disaster. I think that's the best we can do at the moment and prove that yes, we do care. Every single Papuan is important to us. Today, almost every single Papuan knows someone who has died of or is infected with HIV AIDS. Husbands and wives, and now tragically, children. Tapi itu cuma satu kali. Kenapa virus? Kenapa Tuhan memberikan memberikan siapa virus apa? Maksudnya. Samuel Imbiri was infected at the age of 12. Saya mulai pikir-pikir bahwa saya ingat bahwa mungkin saya pernah berhubungan seks satu kali saja. Tapi itu cuma satu kali. Once is all it takes. Bagaimana bagaimana saya harus bergaul intim dengan Allah? Di jalan itu di jalan itu di situ. Kita ada 10 orang, kita ada 10 orang yang, yang sudah positif HIV, tapi mereka sudah, mengenai, mereka sudah mengerti apa itu HIV dan AIDS. Dan mereka juga sudah mengerti apa itu cara, cara penggunaan pakai kondom dan apa itu penjagaan supaya kita tidak tertular pada HIV AIDS. Tapi mereka sudah mengerti tapi mereka tidak, mereka tidak menggunakan kondom. Mereka hanya asal, hanya asal berhubungan cek saja begitu, tukar-tukar pasangan. Jadi, jadi dari, dari sebagian itu juga mereka mereka masih apa masih ingin menularkan kepada kepada orang-orang lain lagi. If attitudes don't change, if the brakes aren't put on infection rates soon, Papua will face a social and economic catastrophe in future. I cannot say I'm confident, Helen, but I'm hopeful. We can do the best we can. Samuel Imbiri is now 18 and he represents the age group with the highest infection rate. He should be the future of this province, yet he's living on borrowed time. Kekhawatiran itu bisa terjadi bahwa kalau generasi muda yang sekarang ini tidak hati-hati, tidak mau mendengar, tidak takut terhadap bahaya HIV. Samuel Imbiri is talking, but no one is listening. Kita juga sudah memberikan mereka informasi dan penjelasan mengenai kondom dan apa HIV dan AIDS, tapi mereka mereka malas tahu, mereka tidak mau mendengarkan semua itu. Mereka tidak mau mendengarkan, jadi mereka apa biarkan saja tanpa kondom saja mereka lakukan hubungan seks gitu. Yeah. <tuh>